Thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoy it too. Um, hello, everybody. It's really lovely to be presenting this session to you today. Um, a couple of things to bear in mind. First of all, I am speaking in effect to myself. So please, please, please do engage using emojis. Um, I can't keep an eye on the chat as well right now, but the team are keeping an eye on the chat. But at any point, thank you. There we are. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling the love already. So you have helped to boost my confidence um, in delivering this session. So thank you. Um, but yes, it can be quite a lonely place here on stage. Um, so I really appreciate any support um throughout don't don't feel shy at all so this is a safe space this is about kindness it's about being supportive and it's being respectful to one another so when you do engage in the chats please bear that in mind if someone has shared something maybe perhaps something vulnerable please do show some support um, for one another because that's really what helps bring the magic of these sessions um, to life um, the slides have been created. They have been created with inclusion in mind. So um, they are inclusive of genders. They are inclusive of um, accessibility as well. We've tried to keep them really, really simple um, in the text and the format. And I hope that works for you. And if it doesn't, I do welcome um, any feedback after the session. So that said, um, also last thing, I will be keeping an eye on several different screens. There's a lot going on at this side, but um, you have my full attention. I'm just trying to manage and make sure everything goes smoothly for you. So with that, we'll go to the next slide. Um, I have a question for you to start with. So I'd like to know how you're feeling today, but I'd actually like to know how you're really feeling today. So with the use of emojis, if you're hungry, it can be a food emoji. If you're on holiday or it's sunny where you are, it can be one of those related emojis. So any emoji at all, let me know how you're feeling. Oh, I'm sorry. It looks like we have a mix and there is someone going through some difficulty, someone who's very, very tired. We have some good moods. Those of you who aren't feeling so great, please do take care of yourselves. Um, I hope this um, session does bring you um, some uplift. It will be very conversational style, even though I'm talking to myself, but that works too. Um, and I hope you do get the support you need, um, if at all you need any after this session. So thank you, everyone. So today's session is about self-confidence. Now, when I looked it up the, the meaning, there were so many different meanings, but I went with the Oxford Dictionary meaning, which is a feeling of trust in one's abilities, qualities and judgment. So to have confidence is to be able to have trust in how we perform, the qualities that we bring um, and the judgment that we use. So today, there's no quick fix answer to building your self-confidence. This, I hope, will start for you a journey in cultivating lasting self-confidence where you can prioritise your mental health for a more fulfilling and empower empowered life. This also helps you to build stronger, healthier relationships. And that's a really important piece of your self-confidence journey. So I hope we'll be able to provide you with strategies um, and ideas that you can build on as you progress further into building your own self-confidence. Okay, a little bit about me. So this is how you pronounce my name. It's Sunaina Kohli. Professionally, you can scan that QR code and learn more about me via my LinkedIn profile, or you can um, take a look at my website. I, my uh, consultancy is called The Human Difference, and I set that up so that we can really tap into um, stronger communities, more inclusive cultures, um, and just bring our human difference to the forefront of everything that we do. I'm giving you my human difference background in the middle column there, because I want you to understand why I'm speaking to you today. I'm, let's call, an experience expert. I'm, I have a Kenyan Indian background. Um, my family were first generation immigrants coming to the UK. I am the eldest child and that brings with it a lot of responsibility, which means we sometimes forget to take care of ourselves. Therefore, my confidence isn't where it should be. I'm the only girl. I have two younger brothers and I think that definitely has impacted how I present myself um, and my self-confidence as I've evolved through my career, um, professional life and personal life. And in 2021, I suffered a severe burnout um, from just so much at work, toxic environment, exhaustion, 
post-COVID effect. Thank you. Um, I also lost my dad. And I think the recovery of that, which has now been three years, has impacted my self-confidence. So I definitely do speak from a place of, of truth and lived experience. And I hope you find that relatable for your own journey. My human difference, now I've been through all that, is that I absolutely am grounded in my values. This is so important to me. And if I tell you anything today, please take away the fact that understanding and knowing your why, what you exist for, what your purpose is in life, and understanding the values that help to deliver on that purpose are really, really important. And one of the most um, important attributes of my human difference is that I'm fierce. And that doesn't mean my self-confidence doesn't get shaken now and again. It just means my utter belief in myself has to be my priority. Thank you for the emojis. <laughs> so why does self-confidence matter? So it helps us empower deci decision making. We are more decisive and more, we're more willing to take calculated risks when we have confidence. So I think the ability not to have to second guess, which can also be mentally exhaustive, the ability to really know your direction. Um, I am grounded in, in all the lived experience that you saw in the previous slide. I really follow my intuition and that's where a lot of my self-confidence comes from. If you're not there yet, if that hasn't been a part of, of, of how you show up, perhaps experiment and look at that more because intuition can guide you and fuel your self-confidence. Um, and I have taken some pretty big risks um, personally and professionally and thankfully um, they did pay off. Resilience. So fostering resilience is a key piece of self-confidence. So those with self-confidence, you're better equipped to bounce back. OK, something didn't work out. That's fine. Let's go at it again. Let's go at it in a different way. Or let's take a moment to reflect um, and come back at the situation or the decision in a refreshed way. Your enhanced relationships. I mentioned this earlier. People with self-confidence tend to have stronger, more fulfilling personal and professional relationships. Because when you understand you and how you're showing up and have confidence with that, you're able to present better to those around you. And of course, self-confidence inspires achievement as well. This is a crucial ingredient for fulfilling your potential and achieving meaningful success. Um, those of you who may know Simon Sinek, he's an author and inspirational speaker. So he recently quoted in, in one of his um, pieces of writing that 93% of people believe self-confidence is critical to professional success. And about 85% of people still report struggling with self-doubt themselves. So those are some really heavy data insights and I think it's really important that you consider them as you go on your journey. So 85 people still report struggling with self-doubt themselves. So when you struggle with your own doubt, just remember you're very likely not the only person in the room who is going through that moment, who is feeling um, that discomfort. We're going to address uh, negative thought patterns. This for me is a starting point of any sort of journey of building confidence. Understand where these feelings are coming from and what it is that you're feeling, right? So first of all, we have to understand the negative thoughts. So very often we are very hard on ourselves. So let's take that as a, as, as a given. But that involves filtering out positive thoughts. So when you're in a given situation, it's very often when you lack self-confidence, positive thoughts don't get a chance to feed in. So if anything, I would ask you to consider balanced thoughts. Try not to be too polarized in having too negative or too positive a thought. Sometimes I tell people, think nothing, just go with the flow and see what happens. Overgeneralizing is, is also a common theme of lacking self-confidence. One experience doesn't define who you are, whether that was a terrible experience, a mediocre experience or a great experience. All our different experience of what makes up who we are as individuals. So I think if something hasn't gone the way you want it, a presentation, a speaking opportunity, a decision, that's OK. But that doesn't mean 
that all of your decisions, your presentations are going to reflect that same experience. So sometimes taking a step back and understanding perhaps what happened in that moment will then help you grow and be stronger for your next moments. But try not to overgeneralize. And don't jump to conclusions. Don't assume your audience or your team or whoever it is in the room when you're presenting or speaking or whoever was part of the decision that you made. Don't assume their perceptions. Don't go, jump to conclusions that they thought it was terrible or that they thought you know you could have done way better. That's not always the case. And I've learned that absolutely so many times. I think you really have to understand truly and deeply what has happened in a situation or a room where you may feel something hasn't gone as well as it could have done. Understand before you allow your negative thoughts to take over. And there we go, challenging your negative thoughts. Here are some different ways of doing that. So it's really important to honor the thoughts. So in a moment after, let's say it's a presentation, how are you feeling? Do you feel disappointed? Did you forget stuff? Were the crowd not as engaging as you thought, more engaging, which obviously is a great thing. But I think really stop and take a moment to understand what you're feeling and what it was behind that feeling. Because when you understand those triggers, that's when you can manage them and perhaps try and sort of diffuse them and dilute them as you progress into your journey. And definitely recognize your strengths. You have them, you absolutely have them. The fact that you perhaps got to that presentation moment, the fact that you were part of a big decision-making process, you have attributes, positive ones and strong ones. Ground yourself back in those, doesn't matter the outcome of that moment, ground yourself back in the why, why you were even at that point. And that's because there are strengths and attributes and capabilities that you definitely need to shine on and reflect on. So acknowledge your mistakes. So failure is the new success, right? I'm sure you've heard that. And it's true. For if I reflect back on perhaps circumstances that haven't gone so great for me, um, maybe a failure, maybe just not a great day. There's always been learning in it. And I guarantee you a few weeks or months down the line, something better happens. And you know that that's because way back when, that moment that wasn't so great, it turned into something better. There's always something better and there's always something to learn from those moments where you perhaps don't feel um, that you were your best self. Calmly consider possibilities. So if there is a negative thought, if you feel you perhaps didn't show up as well as you could have, what could be behind that? Maybe it's not you, maybe that moment you weren't set up for success by perhaps the environment, by the team, by maybe a hectic schedule. Think about the things that could have also co um, contributed to your difficult moments. It's not always you, so please don't always blame yourself. I think the last point here is really important. We need to be super kind to ourselves in any growth process, in any development process. And I think in building our self-confidence more, more, more than anything. Kindness is also such a mental health flex. If you can't show kindness to yourself, I think that's where you really need to start building from initially. You need to treat yourself just as you would treat a friend, a colleague, someone in your family, who was struggling with the same, who was experiencing the same challenges as you. And we are never as hard to other people as we are to ourselves. So just take a moment to step back and be more human and more kind to yourselves. Okay, and the third um, pillar here is about leading with mindfulness. So again, be very present, be aware of your thoughts in the moment. Practice mindfulness, that's really, really important because it can reduce the power of negativity. So if you allow yourself in an important moment to be consumed by the negative thought patterns, that's not going to serve you well. Bring in kindness, put yourself in the present. What are the strong and positive attributes that are going in your favor and lean into them to help it make a more comfortable and positive experience for yourself? Someone taught me breath work many, many years ago or introduced me to it. And I'm not a fan, absolutely. Um, and I probably like ignored the breath work advice for many, many years up until six months ago 
when someone took me through an exercise that really, really made a difference for me. Before then, I've even got a recording. I, I turned up on stage at, at one of my biggest audiences um, across the other side of the world. And in that moment, I was terrified. And I went on in the first seven minutes of that um, presentation, I was so out of breath because I didn't control my breath because I was so nervous. And yeah, my confidence wasn't great that day. But now I've understood how to play with my breath. So I think if someone mentions a a um, a practice to you and it doesn't re resonate at first, it's always worth delving in deeper because there isn't one type of breath work. There are hundreds of types of breath work. And I found the one that worked for me the most. Of course, most recently, I would have loved to have explored it better many years ago, but it's working now and it's what I use. So I think don't just listen at first instance, definitely do your homework and see what works for you. Journaling is a perfect example of that. I hate journaling, it's not going to happen. And so many people have recommended it to me. However, in case you hadn't noticed, I like talking. So I actually voice note myself um, and that works so much better for me. So me sitting down with a journal in the candlelight, incense burning, all of that doesn't work. Me on the go, leaving myself a voice note, world of difference. And sometimes that's after a presentation that maybe didn't go so well or after a meeting where I thought I could have shown up better and stronger. And then instead of kicking myself all the way home, reflecting on the negative, I'll leave myself a voice note. And that will encourage me for next time. And you know, we're our most biggest critics, but also we're our biggest advocates. So giving myself a pep talk that I can listen to in a couple of hours time when I'm calmer is always, always um, a great way for me to um, recover from a not so great moment. Okay, some positive mindset rituals. So positive affirmations again if this isn't for you that's okay but you need to find the recipe of the things that work for you best um but if positive affirmations is what works for you then you need to replace self-doubt with self-belief and this is absolutely where kindness comes in you have to be gentle with yourself you have to be patient because even with these strategies and and recommendations nothing will magically happen overnight you are rebuilding yourself up to be the confident person that you want to be and with any developmental skill or capability that will take time so take your time and find out what works for you best visualization techniques this one i kind of like because um, as my confidence builds i get more cheeky with with how i'm visualizing myself on stage so remember at the beginning when i said being fierce is where my happy place is. So yeah, I play with that on stage. I imagine myself 10 foot taller than I actually am. I imagine, you know, whatever it takes for me to really be in my absolute confidence, in my mental strength and comfort. That's really important for me. So again, <clears throat> experiment, see what works and find your happy medium with that. Self-compassion, I've said it right the way through, this is really, really important. I can't emphasize it enough. You have to treat yourself as you would treat anybody else who was your colleague, someone you were coaching, um, a friend, a family member, even a stranger, because if you found a stranger going through what you put yourselves through, you would be kinder, you would be gentler with them. So please practice that for yourselves. Daily reminders, okay. The team at Open Up um, giggle when I do this and I hope it's going to work because of the background, but my daily reminders are on colored post-it notes in all the important places in my office, in my room, on a mirror that I pass daily, whatever it is. These are really important, A, because the colors are joyful, so they're gonna make me happy. So I'm only um, associating those reminders with positivity but then the reminders can be anything they can be your positive affirmations they can just be a side note um, it, can be absolute, it can be for me the word fierce that is all I need to see in capital letters to know and remind myself to put myself back in my power of self-confidence so I think find a way for daily reminders it might be scheduling something in your calendar at the start of the day um, or 30 minutes before an important meeting. Whatever works for you, find that, practice that, 
And if it doesn't make a difference, then just make a tweak here or there to what really does resonate with you personally. Now, harmonizing your self-care is really, really important. It's not just about the practices that I've shown you. And yes, the post-its are great, but still, mindfulness practices will serve you well, but you need to be rested. Only when you're rested, getting adequate sleep, can you actually make healthier, more empowered decisions, especially if those decisions have a risk held onto them or if they are life decisions or if they are, <clears throat> excuse me, decisions about major projects at work. You need to be rested. Your mind needs to be able to think clearly without distraction. Balanced nutrition, we are what we eat. So even having a healthy diet plays a lot into your self-confidence because when you eat better, you feel better. And that's really important. Regular exercise as well. So um, yeah, I'm not a fan of the gym. I go because I have to, and I go because I love chocolate. If I didn't love chocolate and cake, I would not be at the gym as much as I do. But there are other benefits to regular exercise, right? Because as much as I don't want to go there, once I'm there, and on the way home, I do feel energized. I do feel different. I definitely have more creativity, more clarity. And any negative thoughts or thoughts that were weighing heavy on me do tend to lift. So, and if they don't, I obviously didn't do hard enough in the gym and then I'll have to go back tomorrow and try again. But I think everything in balance, everything in moderation, be as kind as you can to yourself. And you may not be able to nail all of these things. And actually, if there are other things the other practices that you have in harmonizing your self-care, by all means, use an emoji, drop it in the chat, let everyone else benefit from your experience. Um, but a balanced lifestyle is really important to your mental well-being, which will then fuel you to be the more confident person that you want to be. OK, the relationships part. So fostering healthy relationships. I think having a, um, a strong support system around you is really really important this that doesn't have to be the sum of a hundred friends this can be three people that fuel you with everything that you need but they need to be positive they need to be encouraging they need to uplift you they need to see you i have people in my support system um in my inner circle as i call it who absolutely see me when I don't see the value I bring to myself sometimes. They remind me of who I am. They are so comfortable with themselves that it's no big threat to tell me that I am good at this or that I excel at that or think differently, think better. I really value that. And I, in return, am there for them. We always are stronger for other people. But I really value that they help ground me in who I truly am and what I can achieve. If you don't have that right now, I would seriously think about who are the five people most immediate around you because there's that saying that we are the sum of the five people closest to us. So if they're successful, if they're ambitious, um, if they're driven, those qualities will also be reflected on us or at least help us to draw the same out in ourselves. So take a look at who's around you, who's your inner circle, and are they serving you to be the best, most confident version of yourself? Meaningful connections. What does that look like? Maintaining eye contact. So how many times? And again, I also caveated this session with the fact that I will be looking here and there because I have screens everywhere. I'm trying to give you the best um, of myself in this session. But I've explained that to you. But maintaining the eye contact is really, really important. It's important for me that you feel that I value you. Um, but it also shows a sign of your self-confidence, because if you're looking away, if you're not comfortable, that automatically tells me that you're, there's some serious discomfort there. And that will impact the way that I can then build a bond with you personally, professionally, um, even family. When we are asked to listen or when there is an expectation to listen, we automatically assume that that listening means that we have to act. And it's not the case. Sometimes people just want to be heard. So I think learning to listen, to understand and hear someone out is more than enough. You don't always have to respond. And the last thing here is you must speak of yourself positively. I know when I was recovering through burnout, I put on 
an excessive amount of weight, the heaviest I've ever been. But I knew that was something I would deal with later when I was mentally strong enough and I'd rebuilt myself up again. But I know that I didn't speak very kindly of myself. In jest, I would make a joke all the time, but I know that was a defense mechanism. It's not kind. It doesn't help you. In fact, it, it even hinders your progress to your self-confidence. So looking back, I could have done a lot better um, for myself, been kinder. So please speak positively about yourself. And if you're not in a place where you can do that right away, definitely don't speak negatively. Healthy communication. So eventually when you have those meaningful connections, you have safe space and you're with the people um, that hold you up you'll be able to develop the ability to express your feelings, your needs and your boundaries. Your boundaries are so important, but they'll only be respected when you respect them. So once you're with the right people and you've built up that meaningful connection, all this will manifest into healthier communication and a healthier version of you. So just a quick reflection. This is a little bit of a self-confidence plan of the do's and don'ts. Um, that we need to consider. So stay grounded in your values, your faith, your beliefs, review your support system, build healthy relationships, develop positive mental rituals, that's so important. Celebrate small wins, have to, all the time. I actually make sure I pass my favorite cake shop and pick up a cupcake for me and the others, whatever. But um, I am important in that moment, of course. So if I've really accomplished something that I'm very proud of, that I knew was very stressful to um, build up to, then I will celebrate that small win by myself or with others. It doesn't matter. It's acknowledging that it was a win. And be brave. Honestly, we get nothing by sitting back in the shadows. So step forward, be a little fierce, celebrate your wins, absolutely be brave. I'd like to ask you not to overwhelm yourself. I've shared a lot here today. So be kind, be balanced, um, and one step at a time as you try and discover what works for you best. Don't listen to the wrong people. If on reflection, the people in your immediate circle aren't serving you to the best of your ability for who you need to be today, just sidestep, you know, find some new folks. Um, we don't have to fall out with anyone. We just need to know where to focus our time and energy most right now. Don't rush yourself. Patience and kindness, remember. And don't compromise your boundaries because, as I said earlier, people will only respect your boundaries if you respect them. And if you don't, then we're back to square one. I want to take you through something now. Um, as I watched the Olympics unfold last month, or this month even, um, there were two stories that really, really stood out to me when I was putting this content together. Um, and it was about self-confidence. It was about self-belief. It was about the people around you. It was about your values and faith. There are two stories that I'd like to ask you to reflect on as you go on to your journey of building your self-confidence. So these two individuals, and I'm sure you'll have heard of at least one of them, if not both of them. So Iman Khalif, um, the female boxer, and Arshad Nadim, the Pakistani javelin uh, thrower. So they have an incredible story each of resilience, self-belief and success. Now, Iman's experience wasn't positive at the Olympics. Due to a lot of misinformation and negativity, she went through um, questioning about her gender and eligibility to qualify for the Olympics. It was really, really sad. I mean, I don't know that if I had that criticism in my profession, I don't know how I would have coped. I really, truly don't. She was getting hit globally. She was getting hit by politicians, um, global celebrities. She was getting a lot of love and support, but some very high profile people, there was a lot of toxicity around her and her situation. And it's actually something she, I think she has also, there was evidence of this also playing up a little bit in, in her career historically, but really came to life at the Olympics and on such a grand stage, it wasn't a great situation. Rashad Nadim, he's from rural India, from a very humble background in a very, very tiny village um, where there's not much money. It's not very affluent. He didn't even have a javelin. He used to practice with um, a stick of bamboo and his villagers pulled their money together to ensure that his training continued. 
He had no official sponsorship, no government sponsorship. He had um, poor training facilities. I believe his gym didn't even have air conditioning. So he was only able to train really early in the morning, or really late at night to be able to cope with the intensity of his training without air conditioning. Now, I think you know where they both ended up by the end of the Olympics. So Iman, Iman was the first Algerian woman to win gold in boxing for her country. And Ashad won Pakistan's first gold medal since 1984. And he set a new Olympic record for the longest javelin throw. They activated their self-confidence strategies, right? So they challenged negative thoughts. They stayed focused on the end goal and they both got in. They programmed themselves to recognize their strengths. No matter what anyone told them, they were not going to see otherwise. I'm not saying it's easy. And they did that in the public spotlight as well, but they did it. I am pretty sure that they had a very tight um, schedule around mindfulness, around sleep, around nutrition. After all, to be Olympians, you would have to focus very heavily on that holistic approach to well-being. And their support system, that fueled their confidence, their self-belief, their kindness. Ashad had extraordinary uh, community support from his village back home. These are the positive attributes that helped fuel them to who they turned out to be and to their success at the Olympics. And Iman, actually, there's a quote I want to leave you with. And I want you to think about this as you start to show up in a more confident version of yourself. She said, I am a woman like any woman. I was born a woman and I have lived as a woman, but there are enemies to success and they can't digest my success. So I love that she hasn't made the negativity her problem. No, remember challenging the thought processes at the start of this session? She understood that those who were against her success couldn't handle her success. And that's where I'd love you to be. A few weeks from now, a few months from now, change the narrative, change the script, um, and make that success yours. Don't let anybody steal it from you. And with that, Natalia, over to you. Hey, Naina, thank you so much. Thank you so much for this masterclass. It's been absolutely amazing to see you speak. And also thank you all for being here with us. It's really nice to see all the comments coming through the chat. If you could read them to Naina, it's amazing to hear also the support of only what you're saying, but people giving advice to each other. Love, love that. It's super, super nice. And thank you also for being so vulnerable and sharing with us a bit about your experience as well. It's, wow, really, yeah, thank you. Um, there's tons of questions, of course, so I'm going to jump immediately into that. And... I see that all of you have been really active, so thank you all for doing that. I'll start with uh, the most upvoted questions for today. So the first question is, I'm just gonna read it as it is. Not sure if it will be addressed, but I'm especially hoping for some techniques to deal with people who I feel are actively trying to undermine me and my confidence. Okay. Sorry, I was writing it down. It helps me process it. Um, thank you. Um, I'm very quickly, uh, I think I'm going to take away some homework from here. Um, there are so many valuable and important questions asking about the how. Um, I'm happy to put together a PDF or something and you can share that afterwards with uh, people that registered for this session. Not a problem at all, because these are really important questions. Uh, Julianne, by the way, how am I feeling? I'm feeling relieved that that's done. <laughs> and thank you for all of your engagement. Um, so people who are actively trying to, can you just um, repeat the second part? People that are actively trying to undermine me and my yeah, confidence. Yeah. So some techniques on how to deal with these people. Okay, you're going to need some strong, um, and this is in my opinion, I don't know the science of it, but seriously, from, from lived experience, you're going to need to really get down and dirty with some strong, um, uh, mindful 
focus on you. They're clearly either threatened by you, so they will try and undermine you. So you are doing something very, very right. I would reflect on what you are doing very, very right that is unsettling them. Uh, remember Iman Khalif's um, quote, right? The problem wasn't her, the problem was others couldn't handle her success. I personally think that's the truth. I think who are these people, right? Are they in your inner circle? Because then you need to check in on that inner circle. And I'm really sorry, but here's my honesty. Be brutal. Here's my fierce coming out now for you. Be brutal with that inner circle, right? Nobody is worth you compromising your happiness. I don't care if they're my childhood friend. I don't care what happened because at some point we've balanced out the whatever you did for me, I did for you in return. But sometimes relationships can run their course. Nobody has to hate each other. We just have to know when to step back. So I would definitely say analyze who that is, what the relationship is to you, and can you distance yourself from them in, in a way that is kind to you um, and respectful to them. Yeah, thank you for that. I love how you say you're probably doing something right. That's definitely the case. I would say that. I would say you're definitely doing something right. <laughs> this is you have to understand people hitting on your self-confidence. Anything that people bring to you is you mirroring something back to them. So you're clearly mirroring an insecurity back to them that they can't live with. So it's easier instead of doing the work to just throw shade on other people. And that is what's happening. Yeah. Thank you for that. I really like the next question that maybe we compare with this one as well. And it's what are the self-confidence habits that you can incorporate in your daily or weekly routine? Okay, um, stop talking badly to yourself, right? I, I wouldn't say habits, right? Do one, um, sort of build your power and comfort in it and then do another and then do it. You can't do five things, you can't because you wouldn't be successful and your change wouldn't be sustainable. So I would say first and foremost, listen to your language. Are you using positive language or are you using negative language to, 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 um, about yourself in public? And so I would spend the next week, few days listening to how you show up for yourself. That is so important because until you don't get that right, again, with boundaries, how you talk to yourself, people will latch on to what you tell them is okay to do. So if I talk negatively, people will go, oh yeah, of course, ha ha ha. No, that's not happening. And if you're not confident to speak more positively about yourself, then just take it easy and say very little. Maybe echo in your mind the positive response you want to give about yourself as and until you're ready to start verbalizing that, but don't verbalize negativity. Yeah, thank you for that. And I think it also ties up with a question that I see is from Hannah. Maybe you can add something extra to this because she says, I feel like theoretically, I know that I should be more kind to myself or think less negatively as well. However, in practice, I find it very hard to recognize these thoughts and do something about it. Do you have tips for this? Start with the path of least resistance, right? So in what situation are you talking negatively about yourself that you could, could dig deep, be brave and, you know, channel a bit of Selena fierceness and, and be stronger to show up differently? I think you can't take every scenario. Again, it's just take your, your journey in bite-sized pieces as you can do it. So I would think about the situation where it's easiest to develop that positivity. Honestly, this, this sounds very, very easy and that I haven't thought much or done my homework, but it's not. It really is the simplest, easiest, um, changes that will bring you the biggest results. You have to really be kind and keep it straightforward. Yeah, thank you for that. Indeed. Just start with little things that you feel comfortable with and uh, apply them a bit, right? And it's your journey. It's it, it's their journey who are asking the questions. Natalia, it's your journey. It's my journey. So we have to find our comfort level. I'm definitely going to use the post-its that you mentioned as well, because oh. they're putting a word <laughs> That you can see every day that's like uh, telling you to your face remember this absolutely I've, I've moved on to unicorn stickers and post-its now so it's it's all happening here yeah okay there's another question how being a perfectionist 
impacts self-confidence and mental well-being. And yeah. it tips on how to unblock those moments where something seems not to be good enough. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, I absolutely put myself through hell trying to be a perfectionist. I think I still am a little, but I can let go of things a lot easier. To me, this comes, and there may be many other solutions, and if anyone's got a suggestion, please drop it in the chat. But for me, I think, again, it's looking at your inner circle. I make sure in my inner circle there are different personalities, you know, diversity and inclusion, so even my friends have to be very different. But there's one who's, you know, that person will tell me everything's great and brilliant no matter what I do. But there's definitely two to three people who will absolutely analyse and overnight analyse my work. And with tough love, they will tell me what I need to hear. So I think when you look at perfectionism, go and sit with those people who will tell you the truth because you'll learn to trust them. Because what I think is good versus how they see good, but also they'll justify it. Listen, no, you know, this 80% is phenomenal because, or, you know, how you show up there is enough because. So start asking for feedback, seek feedback from the voices that you trust try and have someone who's who's going to deliver you tough love in a gentle way um and those are some of the best friends to have because they really are serving you with good intent yeah i really like that like kind of having that other person that helps you realize hey maybe you're asking too much of yourself right now yeah without a doubt and i think I, i've learned in the last couple of years that even 80 percent of my worth or what I bring, it might be 200% of someone else's. I will never, my 100%, even if I reach 100%, I'm still not gonna be happy. That's facts, I, I won't be. So I've started to sort of experiment in safe places where I just give 80%. And actually that, that did really well. So everybody's happy. So test, you know, how much you give and the response you get and the success rate, and you'll find your happy medium. I really like that. Also because your 80% might be the 100% of someone else. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I see that someone would like to also know some uh, breath work practices that you can recommend. Okay, so the one that worked for me, I'm a bit woo woo, so a little bit hippie in me, but um, this one was really interesting. So it wasn't so much about breath as about visualization. So before I go on stage, um, someone, told me it's to focus on what was going on in my chest you know when you get butterflies and you're nervous either your stomach or your chest you get that feeling so what he said was stop visualize that whatever's going on and with calm breath try and make it do the opposite so I understood the butterflies within me were spinning like this right so with gentle breath work I bought them in the opposite direction to where they were spinning. It's really weird, but it works. <laughs> but visualizing that and literally visualizing something within me moving in the opposite direction, what a difference. And the breath would take control of that as well. So again, you just have to find a friend who's a little bit hippie, likes their crystals, go and sit with them, ask them, like, how else can I do this? <laughs> and you'll get to a good place. But my gosh, that really works for me. That's a really nice exercise. Thank you for sharing it. I will definitely try it out. Also know for everyone that's listening to us that you can always look at our website. We have tons of recording on breath work and you can start trying what works for you and what doesn't. It's also a good way to start. I have another question here, and is how do you enforce boundaries without feeling bad? Um, you put yourself first, right? Because if you matter, if you value you, if you are kind to you, mm -hmm. if you appreciate you, if your success is as important as anybody else's, then you value that boundary and you deliver the message with kindness. Right. So if the boundary is, let's say, for example, after 430, I'm taking no calls. That's the time I'm going to wrap up my inbox and get myself home for a reasonable hour. Then you make that a thing. You communicate your boundaries to everyone in your team or around you. Um, you don't have to give them a why. Your health is important enough. That's it. You know, I can I can be more productive if I do it this way. Um, 
but then you must honor it. So if someone says, can I just have one last call at 4.45 or something? You're like, hey, I'd love to give you time tomorrow, but actually after 4.30, that's my line in the sand. Yeah. It may not be a work situation. It may be a personal situation. I think at home, if you live in an extended family or if there's a lot going on, that's when boundaries are important too. And you just have to um, make um, a choice that you matter. And then just little trade-offs. Okay, I can't do this because of my boundary, but let's look at that instead. Always be willing to negotiate too. Yeah, thank you for that. I like it a lot. Putting yourself first is also part of self-care and then okay. also thinking of your self-confidence there. Thank you so much. Well, we're getting to now the end of our session and time flies really fast when you're so invested in such a topic, such amazing as this. So I want to thank you all for being here with us today, for your participation, for your questions. Sunaina, again, you, thank you so much for this okay. class. Absolutely amazing. And for all of you here, if you would like to continue working on your confidence, we offer interactive group sessions on confidence also at Open Up. It's a two-part series, and you can sign up via the link that is popping right now on your screens. And know also that uh, we do master classes every month. So our next master class is coming in September, at the end of September, if I'm right, the 26th, and it's gonna be about happiness. So you can also sign up via the button that is popping right now on your screens. And we hope to see you all there. Once again, thank you all for being here and hope you all have a lovely rest of the day.